Hello everyone, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines. Now, in the last episode, I had just reached the milestone of 32,000 population, reaching the status of a capital city. Now, while that's all very well and good, and my mom is very proud of me, the important thing is that the city limits have now been expanded, giving us much greater access to use the highway. Now, we can finally have multiple points of entry into the city, and in today's episode, the plan is to just tackle the transport and traffic issue we've been having for a while. So we're going to be expanding our transport infrastructure for rail and naval. That's right, naval. Now before we begin, I got a very quick time lapse just showing how we kind of built the interchange at the beginning of the city. So let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so very quickly here, you'll notice that I'm actually purchasing several tiles around the play space that we have currently available to us. And I just wanted to talk about that briefly while I'm destroying some of the old infrastructure here in the background. Effectively, using the 81 tiles mod, which has been active in my game since the beginning, that's the mod that allows us to expand beyond the natural limits of the game, generally speaking, anyway. And we always knew that we were going to be working up to that with this particular map. I had thought that you had to get to the end of the progression in order to get all of the tiles or cheat and unlock everything, therefore having all the buildings and all the tiles. But no, they've actually built it in where you can unlock just the tiles and keep the progression in the game. So it's the best of both worlds because I'd asked you guys, what should we do? And a few people pointed that out and I thought that's a great middle ground. And as someone in the comments actually pointed out, they said, I think you've earned it now to expand. And I think that's true. 32,000, pretty happy with it. Using the realistic population mod, I think it's fair that we uh, just buy some of those tiles up around us, have the creative freedom to kind of progress and now really push ourselves in order to get to nuclear power at 42,000, I think it is. And then further and further up, all the way up to 72,000, I think, for the metropolis. And who knows beyond that, how, what, we'll, what we'll be able to achieve. So I just thought I would quickly touch on that there at the beginning. You're also seeing this time lapse. It's, it's, it, I've sped it up quite a bit because I didn't want the episode to go on too long, but also because there was so much trial and error and there's so much moving little nodes that I thought some of it would be interesting to see and all the trial and error I tried to cut out. So you'll see little cuts every now and then where some infrastructure might already be in place. Like right now, there's a, a roundabout. How did that get there? It's not the same one as before. It was just one of my trial and error roundabouts that I'll end up removing in a minute. Anyways, so the thought, now we can slow down. The thought behind this area basically was this is one of our entrances into the city. There's only going to be one other one for now. The plan is to maybe have a third and possibly a fourth far off to the west and far off to the east. Uh, but these are the kind of two more central ones, right? So this one is coming in by the farms and going into the suburbs. So I decided to remove the highway and make it a bridge that was a medium road, a four lane road that just leads in and then reconnect the industry back out to it. Just as I had it before, but it's no longer a highway anymore. It's a road that actually has a path. And you'll see that's actually functional. People walk to work now across that bridge. Whereas before, because it was a highway, they don't. A few people had actually asked me to build in a pedestrian bridge onto that, but this is a much more elegant solution, I think. Especially since it's going over to suburbs, I just don't think you would have such a massive bridge anyway. Anyways, so over at the... Um, Agricultural farms because I wanted to make a bigger road and have a wider density road going uh, industry road going in as well I decided to clear out some of the buildings. They'll be put back in later So don't worry about that But I'm building an interchange here and knowing that this was the suburbs or the town part not the city part It just felt like this interchange shouldn't be as big and For two reasons really not really for the realism I suppose that's kind of how, one of the reasons but the other reason primarily that I was thinking of was I just didn't want the place getting terribly backed up so I didn't want loads of vehicles to have access to this. So what I did was I only built an entrance from one side of the highway. One side of the, the other side of the highway doesn't have a way in here. Now the, you're able to get out onto both sides, but you're only able to get in from one of the sides. The other entrance into the city will have access from both sides. Now, if this doesn't work out, you can always add in another little overpass thing that brings people in. But uh, I thought it would be an interesting thing to try, seeing as we're opening up a, a higher density road further down that we'll talk about later when we get to it, I thought it would make sense then to try to focus more cars on that. So that has a way in for both sides of the traffic and then they can kind of find their way around. So I talk about these problems a bit more in depth when we get into the actual playing of the game. Uh, but for now, as you can see, we're just I've placed in a new roundabout a little further down. We have a medium industry road coming into it, that medium road then going into the suburbs. And then I was just adjusting the position of the farms. I actually made a big cut here because it was very jarring to watch, but all the farms have been nudged uh, one grid space over, and that's just given us space to move that um, industry road further in. And I just let time play, and I was like, just checking if everything was working. And it was. People are using that road on the right. So actually, initially here, um, people were using the roundabout 
and still just continuing on instead of using the bypass, if you know what I mean. Is that what's called? Bypass? Anyway, I'll just call it bypass. The roundabout bypass road, people weren't really using it correctly. They were just using, getting onto the roundabout and then going past it. And so it didn't make sense. So I had to use some like lane connection stuff in order to force them to do it. And then it seemed to work just fine. Uh, by telling them, like, yep, you should definitely go this way. And if you're getting onto the roundabout, you're not allowed to take that first exit effectively, is what I've done. Anyway, uh, just thought I'd show in some of the creative bits here, just adding some patterns on the road, trying to add in that road island thing just to kind of make it look like it's a uniform road, even though I guess it's always bothered me. The texture is not quite the same. Little pathway that goes down to the agricultural area. And now we are back over at the main city. So I know we're hopping around quite a bit, it is pretty fast. I think it's on like eight times speed for most most of the stuff. So I was redoing some of the roads in the downtown area. I wanted to have more bigger, wider roads. As I'll mention in the episode, I've just had a recent trip to Amsterdam. That's why uh, videos are a little sparse for a while, but they'll be back on track pretty soon. I have no more trips planned for at least another month and a half. And um, yeah, so effectively going to Amsterdam, I saw all these big, big wide roads, lots of traffic going down. Well, actually not much cars at all, which I talk about later, but lots of open space. So I was encouraged to use some different roads I've never tried before. This is an asymmetrical road. Decided to put four lanes on one of the sides and three lanes on the other side. Now, well, I, I guess I talk about that later in the episode as well, so we'll leave it. But this interchange here, I actually designed my own one, modeled after an interchange in Crawley, a town that I live nearby in the UK. I live uh, kind of between Crawley and Horsham, so I frequent both of those places. And Crawley has, the Crawley interchange is effectively this big sort of, it looks like a square roundabout with a motorway traveling underneath it and, and ways on four different ways to get on and off of this like sort of roundabout. And it's gated by traffic lights um, as well once you get up to it. So I was gonna copy that. I thought it was quite an effective looking thing. And it looked kind of nice and unique. Tried building it for probably two hours, just couldn't make it work. Just couldn't make it look good, couldn't make it look the same. Uh, so it gave up. So I ended up using an in-game inter uh, interchange here, like this one, and then just kind of modifying it slightly, bringing it closer together, shifting the height of uh, certain things. And um, yeah, just making it fit the road that we have, I guess. Uh, and this one seems to work obviously fine and does the exact same thing. <laughs> so it's probably more elegant than the solution I was going for, but I was trying to use one that I'd seen in my everyday uh, journeys out there. So at night time I'd realized I'd raised it way too high so I lowered it kind of back down. It's still ultimately a little higher than it was at the beginning and it's a bit smoother also and it's way more compact so pretty happy with how it turned out in the end but it's not a true Darren original and perhaps that's for the best. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's how we, uh, how I designed the two different interchanges and yeah we'll see it throughout the episode and see if it's effective. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the new and improved City of Swords. At least, I think it's an improvement anyway. So we have the first interchange here down into Crown Farms, which is changed. Uh, <laughs> English is fun. So basically, this is actually a bit of a weird one. Effectively, we've changed where the location of the roundabout is, and we've got different ways in to bypass that roundabout if you don't want to go to it. But also, if you're on this side of the highway, on the right side going in, you cannot get in down here. That was done on purpose. I wanted to take the pressure off of going into, by the way, I can just see trees everywhere here. That keeps happening. I have to get rid of them. Anyway, I wanted to take the pressure off of this side of the road and that bridge specifically getting in. That's no longer a highway bridge. It's now just a, you know, four lane road. And um, it's interesting to see because it's not a highway. A lot of people are using it to get to work just by walking. So I actually made a very, very small and quick little pathway here that they tend to use just to get straight into Crown Farm. So all working well. So, you might say, okay, if you're on the right side here, how do you get in? Well, basically, you use the new interchange, right? So, this has um, actually more lanes on the right side than it does on the left. It's got four on the right and three on the left. It's an asymmetrical seven-lane road. And that seems to be working well. More people are taking this than... It's actually not that busy now, but in the morning commute, you'll see that it fills up a little bit more with a lot of people taking their first exit or the second exit if they want to get down to the business park over here. So, if they were coming from this side of the town and they wanted to get into the business park or if you know dare i say they wanted to get over to that business park they'd have to take this interchange in and find a way in through the city so i don't know if that's ideal 
saying it out loud, it kind of makes me think it's not. But uh, that's the way. That's what we're sticking to for now. Until we do something like this, where we cut across in here and then fill a highway road up this side. So that would be really nice as well then. And we could actually build it maybe parallel to the railway. So these are just, I'm just spitballing, just thought of it now. That seems to make sense, right? That would be another sort of highway road that would evenly distribute people in and out of the city on both sides. So I think that's what we'll go with in the future. Anyways, let's catch up for a moment. Let's throw off the shackles of our oppressive world borders and have a look at all this new creative freedom we have. Around the city, the borders have expanded, so we have a lot more play space to work with. We also have the access to the airport now. This was just baked in by the author of the workshop map. This map is called Heart Hill, by the way. And uh, we could build an airport anyway, anywhere, but, you know, he's kind of put one in there for us, so perhaps we'll work towards that in the future. So I thought here at the very beginning of the episode we could do a quick recap as to the current situation. We currently have 4 million in the bank, and that's basically because during all of these various time lapses, I'm just accumulating money left, right, and center. As you can see, profits are good, 24,000 uh, at the moment. It does fluctuate. It doesn't really ever go into the negative, though, and that's because our oil industry is super healthy, so is our... Um, farming industry and then our other businesses are totally fine too the high density <clears throat> excuse me residential is doing quite well for taxes so all of that stuff is great and we've just pretty much hit the cap of our population now 35,500 i would say and that's because we built this new area called prospect which just had the last few people moving into it now so everyone's pretty much settled and moved in i think at least for the time being now i'm not happy with prospect i think it looks ugly not a big fan of it Probably going to change it, but it was just sort of a, a way to get the population to hit that 32,000 milestone when I was rushing for it at the end of the last episode. So we have a wall of offices here, which have actually created a lot of jobs for people, but it's taken away all the high education jobs from our commercial centers. And we can actually see some of them are becoming abandoned. So this is not enough educated workers. You have eight uneducated workers when you only needed one. So it's struggling on the other fronts. And that's because they've all gone to work at these jobs, which are better paying jobs. And, uh, yeah, and also some of the ones that we just we grew some offices out this way as well previously. So that's causing a bit of an issue. Obviously, as more people move in and as time passes, we'll get more education going and it should be fine. We still have some unemployment at 9%. We want to bring that number down if we can. Uh, and as far as I know, that's actually, largely speaking, uneducated jobs. So what we're looking for is more generic industry to give them work until they either get educated or the next generation gets educated, that kind of thing. Anyway, so quick recap, like I said, 4 million, obviously we're totally fine for money. 35,600 population currently. The next milestone is going to be a colossal city at 42,000, giving us access to helicopters, nuclear power plants, and ocean, th ocean, <laughs> ocean thermal energy conversion plants. A lot of cool stuff in there, but... I think it's, we're a bit of a ways off right now because we're going to be focusing on one inherent problem that has been getting better, actually, since I just did something a little earlier just beforehand. We were at 68, so it's come up to 71, 72, traffic flow, that is. Obviously, I think we should be aiming for 80 plus if we could. Um, I would, I'd, I'd take 78, but, you know, I'd aim for 80 uh, at the very least. Now, obviously, you're going to have busy periods and busy places. That's totally fine. You just don't want to see traffic getting backed up and blocking other junctions such as this, right? We've got two lanes of traffic here, block or getting very, very busy, basically blocking buses that are trying to come out and just do their commutes or whatever. That's slowing people from moving down. They're not getting to where they need to go. A lot of problems here. So we want to try and figure this out and see well, what's the issue. So this is why I thought it'd be good to just recap the current situation. So we obviously have our old low density residential across the way. And by the way, I just like to do this recap every now and then because, you know, new people could join the series, people can forget or it could just be a while since we've actually pulled back and had a look at it. So we have obviously low density residential in the majority of the city. Uh, the town, I would say. This is like the town and this is like the city. That's kind of how I feel about it anyway. I've been calling this the suburbs. It's not quite right, but you get the idea. All right, so in the residential areas here, flanking them, we have two generic industries. So Shoreline and then Washington. Those are the two generic industries that we have. Now, inside of Shoreline, there is a specialization on half of it to be oil. And then there's also the very specialized DLC version of DLC, a DLC version of industry uh, for oil specifically. And that's what's giving us some of the unique buildings and factories that aren't being lit up by the yellow um, zoning colors, right? So obviously there's a hybrid industry up there that's specialized between the DLC type of industry and then the generic, and then some of it's been specialized to be literally oil specializations that have the unique buildings. So it's a complicated area up there. 
A lot of jobs, though. And then down here, this is just all generic. Generic factories, whatever. And then we have our Crown Farms agricultural industry, which is um, level 5, doing good. Lots of room for growth and, and change in the future. And that's just basically where all the jobs are. Now, of course, people are working in the commercial zones as well. So we have Victoria Square, and then we have Franklin Heights. So these two commercial zones have some jobs, but not many. But it's a place a lot of people go to to do their shopping, and it generates a lot of money for us as well. So it's just another place that you have to think about where people are going to. And then we have just very small commercial areas up here and down here as well in Rosewood and Butler. Okay, then we get to the serious, dense living, right? We have Robin Heights, which obviously has a ton of people living in it, right? Some of these buildings, you know, 52 households. We're looking at maybe two, 250 people living in that one. Again, about 250 people in that one. Not many in this one, actually, but you get the idea. Some of them just have are packing lots of people. Again, over, yeah, 250, 260 people in this one again. So lots of people are very densely packed in here, but actually... No traffic, right? Things are good there. They have a metro system, they have a bus system taking, uh, going around it, and a tram that goes around the entire area as well. Alright, so, I just wanted to do a quick recap as to the current situation. I feel like sometimes I get quite bogged down, and I forget what I've even said now, because I'll make multiple cuts. So, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, the problem is this. We've got traffic. The issue for traffic is that there's a lot of people living on this side of the river. There's no job opportunities for those people if they are not educated or not well educated. If they are well educated, they're fine. They've got offices, high density commerce, all the sort of stuff that they can work in. But if they need generic industry, they have to travel all the way out to Shoreline or down to Crown Farms or to Washington Business Park. Compound that with those places making things and trying to send it into the high density areas. You've got a lot of traffic buildup, especially because we're using roundabouts. So if you've got people using both sides of the roundabout, it takes a lot of time to kind of flush that and get everyone to where they need to go. Anyways, the solution is going to be to we're going to try to set up transport infrastructure that's going to help people not use their cars. But also in the future, I don't know if we'll get to it in this episode, building another interchange on this side of the highway that leads into the city here and around parallel. So side by side, this railway up to here should allow for this wider breadth of traffic to come in on that right side and join onto the main road from here without having to go through the city. So hopefully that all makes sense and this will take a little bit of a load off of the traffic around these bottom areas. So that's the situation. We're basically at morning now, so let's get started. So one of the first things I wanted to do was start working on rail. Um, so let's get to it. So we're going to be pausing time for a lot of this, I think. So we'll just pause it right there. Going to get rid of this road here. So that's going to be our tram depot, and that's our fire helicopter depot, just in case you're wondering what that is. And we'll just move this. Actually, I won't move it just yet. I'm going to grab this road and just build it out straight along to the left. Just continue it out that way. Alright, so I was having a good look at different buildings and opportunities and things we could use. So I was looking at the public transport hubs. These are buildings that have multiple types of connections inside of the one building. And a lot of them come from different DLCs. Not everything I have unlocked either. Um, so effectively, my main transport methods are I've got tram. I want to build rail. We have buses. And a metro. So obviously, something with all four would be pretty good. But there's nothing specifically with all four of those. So we can combine two of them next to each other to help it out. And that way, everyone has a connection. Um, especially if they all come together in one specific place. And I'm going to build it here because this will be pretty much central to the entire downtown area if we build it out this way. Basically central, anyway. This is our central station. We could call it central, <laughs> I guess. I was actually just in Amsterdam, and I had... Amsterdam is such a beautiful city. It's my favorite city I've ever been to, and I've been there a few times, and it's just I just think it's wonderful. And being in it recently, having played City Skylines, I was like, this is just such an immaculately designed city, at least in my opinion. Now, I haven't been to many cities in my life. Maybe 10, so really not that many. Um, just to name a few, London, Dublin, Stockholm, uh, Amsterdam, of course, Rome, LA. That might be it. As off the top of my head, those are the ones I can think of. Belfast. None of these cities hold a candle, in my opinion. Well, maybe Stockholm, actually, but none of... Oh, Copenhagen is another one, actually. That's really good. So Copenhagen, Amsterdam, and Stockholm are all beautiful, beautiful cities. And Amsterdam would just be my number one favorite. Anyway, the point I'm going to make here is, if you look up on Google Maps, Amsterdam Central the train station it's built like almost on a bay like this so a train station that's like on a bay it's connected to a tram station that's right next to it so it's kind of like a hub building but then it's got like ferry stops at the back of it 
and it's just like a be it's so beautiful and there's all these shops and cool commercial areas and stuff around it. i'm like holy crap it's amazing but then as you go further and further out of amsterdam of course you have all these interlinking canals and stuff and then you've got trams that roll across everything obviously everybody bikes there almost everybody and then the further out you go you do have um sort of like the housing here uh so we are walking past these like kind of places every day from our hotel and you got this nice kind of like a little apartment blocks but the spacing on them is really wide between them in fact it would be it'd be even further than that from building to building across you know obviously they're next to each other like this but crossways excuse me crossways they are really far apart and they'll have a big road going between them but the road is mostly reserved for it's like you have ba um bike pathways on the inside of the paving but there's a line of trees between the path and the bikes so the bikes don't mess with the people the bikes don't mess with the cars the cars don't mess with either you know and i don't know it's just something really really nice and well planned about it anyway i'm going off on a complete tangent but i had a look at that and i was like god damn my city is a disaster <laughs> i've just built what i know and what i know is bad planning basically <laughs> um so anyway i know this is quite a tangent sorry to go off on one but I just thought it'd be, if you have any interest in a game like this, you should have an interest in how that city is designed. And I'm sure a lot of people know more about this than me. Uh, but what I'm going to just do is build a sort of a central station here, multi-platform end station. So it actually, everything ends here. Because because we are at the edge of the water, I can't really have a rail that goes past it, like through it. So you could have this building where rails go straight through, but it just wouldn't really make sense where I am. Now, the one in Amsterdam does have it going through. It's built parallel to the road. So it'd be like that. So rail kind of runs along the coast in a way, and some of it branches off and goes down. I don't have as much space as I would, as they do, I don't think. So I'm not going to do that, plus I'm just not as talented <laughs> uh, to pull that kind of thing off. But we're going to go with a central station right here, and this actually doesn't say, but it actually has a metro station built into the bottom of it. I only noticed that when I was doing a bit of trial and error with some of these buildings. So it actually does have a metro station running right underneath. So we'll pop it in right here. 60,000 schmeckles. An end-of-line train station with 12 platforms. Each platform can have separate tracks connected. Allows passengers to change lines at ease. So it's very, very busy. And you might wonder, what do you need so many tracks for? I, I mean, i got to be honest, I don't know. I have an idea about two destinations, but that's apart from that, I'm not really too sure. So one could be an intercity line, so people coming in from the railway that goes off-map. Uh, one could be to deliver people to various commutes around the... Um, town that we're building and maybe one could be a direct line to the airport now apart from that you might have to give me ideas I'm, I'm not that advanced where I can be building really complicated um, travel infrastructure but I'm doing my best to learn as I go so we'll pop this down looks good I think in this place and we'll have some other facilities next to it all right I'll try to speed up now because I did do a lot of yammering so let's grab our train line and I was just gonna build it straight off of here going all the way down following this road parallel to there, I think. And then we'll just use the curve tool to break it up a bit. I think we always need to have uh, two grid space available on the inside. So something like that. I could bend it a little bit if you need to shape it better. All right, and then we want to join the railway that's here. Now, the railway that's here, I was thinking of maybe moving it slightly. Just move that um, fire watchtower for a second. So there's actually a train right now. So here's the idea. Uh, this will be our first port of call, right? Crown Farms. Perfect place for a passenger train station. We already have a cargo train station there. But it, it's built in a way that was fine for the time. But now it's like a maybe a bit complicated how we could get this in here. So I'm trying to think. Do we want to maybe get rid of this side road? Yeah, you know what? I think we'll just have to do a bit of a bigger infrastructure project here. So just relocate this just for a moment. I know that costs money, but we've got loads. Gonna get rid of this and this and this. All the little trees. So the cargo train terminal has been removed. Just gonna let that train flush out of here. All right, pause this. And I was thinking of making this a main road. Now, I don't know if it can be upgraded, considering where it's it's touching next to farms and stuff already. Uh, so I guess worst case, we're just going to have to delete these. And start moving some things over. Is there space at the back of this? No. It's, everything's very packed in, tightly packed in. All right, well, let's just keep going. I think it'll be okay. 
a lot of the stuff will have to be moved. But I'm planning a redesign of this place, maybe for the next episode or the one after that. So I don't mind deleting a bit of it for now. We've got good money, so I think it's totally fine to build this now with more permanence in mind. So let's do that. All right, let's grab this road. Build it just somewhere here. It's going to be fairly parallel to those tracks. All right, so it's a medium-sized industrial road. I suppose, really, let's just let that train keep going. Not that it matters. I just feel bad <laughs> if you delete it while it's still on it. It feels weird. Uh... like the track has been eroded right from behind it. It's actually carrying oil on the back. All right. So, grab the rail. Okay, here. So you want to follow closer to the coast. Not like on top of the coast, but just a bit closer to it. Let's turn on our contour lines as well, just to make sure we're okay. Great. And maybe we'll start here and just go straight. So nice and straight all the way to about there. And then we'll start arcing it just a little bit. Now, if we're looking at where we want to connect. We can even go further. The bend becomes quite sharp, I, I guess, until you if you go up, until you go further. So I guess we'll start about there. That's quite a pretty natural bend. Oh yeah, I just realized the bridge. Oh, we can always move the bridge a bit. Yeah, that's fine. About there. I think that's good spacing between the river and the uh, track. Especially in case we ever need to add another one going parallel. I don't think we'd need one right now. All right, so I'll just leave that as is. The idea now will be to add in the cargo terminal and the passenger terminal. So I'm trying to think. Cargo terminal really has priority for an industrial area, and then the passenger terminal can go next to it. I just know, I feel like it's a bad idea stacking them on top of each other. So I wonder, could we do one on the inside like this and one on the outside? So that way the, the lines do break up and then meet up again in the future. So that might be the way to go. All right, so I played around with this for a while, made a bunch of mistakes, going to try it now again fresh. So the idea basically was to have the passenger station across from the cargo terminal, but I realized that it's going to have to cross over that road. By the time it crosses over, it doesn't really have an easy way to join into either intersection. It's a bit messy already, so what I'm going to do is actually put this on top and we'll build a bridge, a pathway bridge that just leads over, so a little walkway that goes over both. At least that's the plan. So, let's try this. We'll grab our railway, I'm going to try and build three parallel tracks. One is a bypass that goes between the two, one for the passenger train and one for the cargo trains to actually stop. Uh, in order to do that, we can use the network multi-tool mod to get the create parallel mode. We'll grab here to there, and I'll just shift it out ever so slightly by two meters more than it was saying. And then we'll do that again. So I think if I just... Uh, let's grab that again, basically. What was it? Alt 2, I think it said, yeah. That's a hotkey. So just grab that again. Grab it there. And it's trying a road now, for some reason. Let's just try grab this again. Parallel tool. Bonk. All right. Got it. So, again, two meters. And there we go. So now we've got three tracks running in parallel, one of which will be home to our passenger station. Before we do that, we want to just join these onto the same track. So I'll bring this just a little further out straight, and then it's going to have to... Let's just undo that. Then it's going to have to start turning, obviously, to link up with its buddy. And we could just change where its buddy starts, because it's a little too far back. That's totally fine, right? It's a bit of a sharp bend, I guess. Maybe we could go back just one layer. About there. Okay. All right, cool. Now again, using this tool, we can actually just shape it line just to make sure that that bend is smooth. Nice. All right, cool. A little bit better. Okay, so we'll try to get these two to join into here. This is where it gets a little messy. You might have to use, I guess, Anarchy to do it. I don't really know how you do this without Anarchy to get three lines together. Like, one can just slam into another if you use the bend tool or allow it to bend. But other than that, I really don't really know how you do it. It always seems like it's, it's inverting the other way. 
you almost think you should not do that, right? Go the other way in. Anyways, um, so let's do anarchy. We'll just try to do, yeah, like this. That's what you want, right? Now, can we do that three times over? That's where it gets messy. But it apparently works, so we'll leave it. Now, this one's super messy because it's going into a junction of like two. Now, I think what we could do is if we grab our, so what, just to get these names right, the node controller renewal tool, and we select the node. As you can see, it's a super messed up node. Now, it'll automatically try to shape it, I think, as soon as you click it. But if we click the straighten ends, it's going to push those guys back. And I could push this one back as well. There, that was actually super quick. <laughs> so that one worked just fine. I don't know why that was so easy compared to the other ones. Um, I guess it looks a little strange just in the middle there if you really pay attention, but don't pay attention. It's fine. All right, we're happy with that. Uh, when I say we, I'm speaking for you as well. So we want this to go in here. So what's the road spacing that we need? So it looks like it's about six tiles, six tiles or so. So we need a small road. I guess if we can just grab any old... Industrial road there. Uh, it's difficult to see. So something like this just to start us. So that's four. All right, let's see if it'll fit. So that pretty much would fit. It could maybe come down one grid, yeah? So let's just turn back on selecting everything. Select this, this, and this, and then go one on the arrow key. And I think that might do it. Let's see. Uh, probably again, actually. All right, so gonna delete this little part here. We're gonna just move this straight over. So it's obviously a little offset, but that's because it has its own baked in sort of platform thing on the other side. I think that's when people get off here, they go under or whatever and come out that side. Um, so I can't really do much about that. Now we're sunken in a bit. I don't know, could we raise this maybe? You can, but then the, yeah. So I guess here's what we'll do. Sink that back down. Let's grab that, this, this, and this, and raise it all together. And that way the car park doesn't get messed up. All right, cool, looking a bit better. So basically, we just need a sort of a walkway that leads over, and we have to just rejoin the track. So we'll just tell the track just to pretty much just go straight into there if it can. If I need to reshape it a bit, that's fine. I can do that later. Okay. Now, I don't know if you could just have this road off on its own. I assume you can, because I don't actually need the road, right? I just need a pathway to go across. So we're just going to build a sort of a bridge. So I might get this road just to extend just slightly out that way. And then we'll build a little pedestrian crossing. This might take me a few minutes to do. All right, so there we go. So we have our little pedestrian crossing in. We have our passenger terminal on that side. So the only thing is that it doesn't have a road connection. It looks a little strange, obviously, because there's like spaces for parking cars and there's no way to get there. 
Uh, so the only other thing I can think of for that would be maybe building a little, little tiny tunnel that goes under the thing for cars. Maybe. I'm going to see if it works without it. I think it will, but I'm not entirely sure, I guess. Uh, so next up, we'll just get a new pipeline to run along here. In fact, I could turn on a grid for that. Probably be good. Now I'll just connect it up. So it's going to be a bit of a, a quick and dirty job, because I said we're going to redo this place in future, in terms of just, like, this area will stay the same, but I mean, Crown Farms itself, I want to redo it and expand and use a lot more of this space now, now that we have it. So for now, we're just going to connect up the roads that already exist and not really worry too much about it um, and how it's performing and all that. So we'll just connect these up just kind of quickly. Do I even need that? Yeah, I guess so. It's fine. Whatever. And uh, let's just turn off some of the traffic lights on these. All right, we all good? Seems good. So there's the cargo terminal, and if you want to get to the passenger terminal, you have to walk. I mean, people are getting a train here, so they are going to be walking across anyway. And then we built a little crosswalk for them to get straight over, and then they get to their various jobs and stuff over that way, I guess. Um, so yeah, we'll probably dress up the area a little bit more in future, but for now, I think that's going to be just fine, and we'll just connect, reconnect this road. There we go. All right, let's let time play and see, does this work? So now, that's been quite a while for me, but we've basically hooked up one train station. And how are we for power? Power's okay. They don't have power yet, though. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We need to put back in the tram depot. So again, just te kind of temporarily, we'll just throw it in next to the central station. And this one, again, prop it somewhere over here. And we'll just make sure that they have what they need, which is water. And they need their power as well. Okay, so that should be okay. Next thing, let's get rid of a bit of the road there. It seemed kind of broken. Let's connect that in. All right, so ideally this will connect somewhere like up here. So that way our tram has a connection all the way around, except for obviously down here, but that's okay. Must be connected to the lines. It is now, right? I assume so. Yep, okay, cool. Uh, right, so does this have power? No. So the power has to just connect back to there. That should power everything back on. We're getting very low for electricity, actually, so we could look to put in a new oil power plant. We have a lot of excess oil, actually. There's two garbage recycling centers there. Incineration plants, I should say. There's the oil power plant here. Yeah, I'm just going to copy over another one. Uh, might start looking into the renewable energy soon, though, as we're going to be building out in the water. Just another power plant there. That's fine. A little temporary for now. Uh, but like I said, the focus is on making transport a little smoother, and then it's on beautifying, or at least making these areas make a little bit more sense in terms of their industry. Okay, so, we need to connect back up this road. So again, just bring it to about there, and then we'll get this. Alright, so that's hooked up again now. Not the smoothest road, but it's okay. Water. You guys don't have water yet? Okay, so that's one station done. The next one should be easier. There's not as many complicated junctions. But the next station I was thinking of adding was across from Franklin Heights. The rail line does run past here. Um, it's a little sunken down, though. So this one might be even more haphazard than the other one. But we're just going to throw in a train station somewhere here. <clears throat> so, yeah, roughly... Let's just cut that train line for a moment. And this would just be a passenger train station... There's a bus station right there. Or bus stop, I should say. Okay, so the terrain is obviously super uneven. In fact, it's just far too uneven, isn't it? So let's just refund that just for a moment. See if we can smoothen out this terrain first. So I don't want to soften terrain. I actually just want to level it. So let's just choose a pretty high up spot like there. We're going to bring our brush out a bit, maybe a bit less. So this gives a bit more of a plateau to work with. And this can go a bit further out as well, because the river is all the way sunken down, like, really far. So I don't mind bringing this out. Some earthworks. Ooh. 
Okay. All right, let's go with that. Passenger station. Yeah, it's a bit better, but not really. It's because it's just ultimately it is going to be on a hill. I'm just going to see, feel this out and see if there's a spot a bit further up that would be better. I think the only way it would be better is if it was further out, not further up. Because that's the flat piece of terrain that we just built. So maybe just like around here. And I could build a small side road. Let's see. Alright, so that's what we've got. It's a little bit better. So a little side road that just comes in this way. People can park. Oh, everyone's parked apparently already. Don't know how they've done that. Time hasn't even played. But uh, I think they're using it as parking to get to the um, the shops, of course. Rather than actually use the train station. But we'll see if they start using it soon. Uh, okay, so I had to remove a bit of the rail line for that. So we'll just re-bring that rail line back over this way. So one of them needs to go that way, but one of them needs to just go right past. So this one will just be the bypass. Alright, so there we have it. Oh my god, I didn't notice how many people there are trying to get the uh, trying to get the bus. We could actually build them a little pathway. That just connects these two areas together, maybe. Does that look good? Yeah, it looks great. Um, let's just try to shape this in here a bit better. A little sideways path like that I think is kind of nice. Or diagonal path. Okay, cool. So that's another station hooked up again. I do think a lot of this stuff will be maybe time lapsed in order to clean it up a bit. Uh, but it works, you know. It's a it's a rail line that passes another. Keep it nice and straight. So yeah, using the um, curve tool and some of the height tools might be able to kind of even things up. But it's very uneven terrain. It feels like a lot of stuff would actually have to go, and then you'd like shift the terrain up to level it out, and then rebuild, which is very messy. Uh, it was probably something I should have done. I mean, this this was built, what, episode 5? So I've learned a little bit more since then. Not much, but a little bit. All right, so we'll leave that as is. So we've got now, if we have a look at our height, uh, heat map, sort of, of transport, the orange highlights are our train stations, right? We've got one there, one here, one here, and, and one over there. So I'm going to build another one up here that's going to be for... Actually, you know what? I think another good spot will be somewhere along this road. Maybe inside this gap. Is that too close to here? And then I would have another one up here. That's the plan, anyway. I don't think it's too close. I think it'd be okay. Just trying to think if it's realistic or not, you know? Obviously, you could just pop, pop it in. It would work. This is a commercial center area. You know what? I think I'll leave it. I don't think they need one right across from here. Maybe in the future, but we'll see. But I'll put one at the end for sure. So a way to get straight into Shoreline. So again, I'm going to maybe just time lapse this or go over it kind of quickly. Just build another passenger terminal on the opposite side, similar to how we just did, and then connect it in via a pathway that maybe goes in through this bit or something. Let's begin. Alright, so, it took a little while, but this one's done. It wasn't as bad as some of the other ones. The terrain was pretty flat. So, effectively, what we have is a nice little train station here. We have our car park and stuff. We have the pathway that then leads up and over 
might actually just make a fine adjustment to that pillar and maybe even copy it over it looks like we could do with one or two more <laughs> not just out here like this but perhaps somewhere in like this if we hold shift and page down bring it all the way down and just sink it slightly under so it looks like it's actually holding this bridge up because of course it is all right let's bring it down just so it sinks right under and then from here yeah pretty good right so I added some of the sand texture in a little bit of brush that might have grown a little bit. I don't think maybe the trees would be so realistic, but having little stick stones, small weeds and things, I think would kind of make sense in a place like this until we build it up a bit more and have something else there. Um, yep, yeah, and basically the road does connect all the way around on this side. Looks really weird. Uh, but the plan is to bring this road down along the coast into the quay side. Uh, I thought I'd be doing it this episode, but now I don't know if I'll have the time. So possibly the next one. All right, so I think <laughs> it's been a while, but I think now we can finally actually build or outline the railway station, see how it's going. So uh, start laying out the actual line. So create a new line. We'll join it all the way over to... Ah, oh my God, I'm so silly. We never actually finished this bit, so we can do this quite quick. Okay, so super quick recap. We have our big train terminal there. We have our first little car, uh, passenger train station here across from the cargo, a regular passenger train station here on its own, and another passenger across from the cargo up at the business park there. So in theory, I mean, I don't know. Will people just be still trying to drive to here themselves? Possibly. I mean, if you go out to the train station, it won't take you that long to get there. So we'll see. But we got to put in the line. So let's do it. Create a line. We'll go down to... Crown Farms, we'll go to Franklin Heights, we go to Shoreline, and then we just go back, right? You just put a few stops on the way back. We don't want it making its trip all the way back and not stopping, so we put the stops back in and then just complete the line. And it just pulls in and then pulls back out. I think the passenger trains are like bi-directional. They've got the car and um, the locomotive at the front and the back, unlike the cargo ones, which just reverse, I guess, the whole way. And I think it looks weird, but people did say that that does happen. Uh, so, to take a look at this real quick. Uh, trains, there we go, Train Line 1. Yeah, i have to think of a name for it. I mean, normally train lines are named, I don't know about the lines themselves, but they often have the, the final destination is like what they're called. So we could call this just the shoreline. I guess, unless you've got a better idea, and we'll just let that do its thing. Actually, how many is there? There's going to be four. Let's just bring it all the way down to two to start off with. So just two are going to roll out at first, and it's going to take a while until people start using it. Now, people aren't really going to use it too much until we actually make a connection even here. Now, we've got the tram stop right here. We'll leave time playing in the background while we do this. Let's open up the tram menu, get our stop, and we're going to make a tram stop right here, and we'll start wrapping it around. So it's going to basically be a connection stop. So it's really just going to go all the way to uh, opposite here. To there. My fear with picking people up here and going here to pick people up is that people are just going to hop on this tram and go there. I guess there's no problem with that. I just don't want people using it for the wrong reason. I kind of want them to use it to get to the station ultimately, but we'll see. So this is going to be... Uh, this one here, tram line 4. I'm going to color it orange just so we know it's the line that goes to the train station. And yeah, we'll call it the Centrale after uh, the one in Amsterdam. Which I'm making a mockery of by making it like this. But um, the other thing then, just to check very quickly, would be how many? Yeah, let's just do two. Just keep it nice and small for now. All right, so we should see... Oh, and very last thing would be to change the model. I forgot to do that. All right. So our central line of tram should be rolling out now in a minute. That one's just going to go back in because it's the wrong one. But there it is. Looks cool, black and orange. And then obviously we could just see if people... Well, it's going to take a while, but two people are waiting already. But who knows? They might just be going a short distance. Generally, if you're... There's other lines that will take you those same distances, so you should be waiting for those other ones. The ones, the people that are waiting on this one should be looking for the destination or a place to go that they couldn't otherwise get to. And that's where we'll be stopping first. That's an interesting design, just having it all open like that. I just feel like that would not really exist in the real world. I mean, I've never been to a station. Maybe you guys could correct me. 
where you just walk onto a platform. Normally, you have to go through some sort of gate system first. You can't just, like, open air, get on, and get out of here. Uh, the other thing to do, of course, connect the metro. There is a metro built in here. So let's do that while we're waiting for these guys to do their first kind of, you know, their routes the first time. Uh, so just do regular mode. There we go. So now this is where things get really awkward, right? Because our we're just going to be piling lines on top of each other, London Underground style. <laughs> but maybe one day we'll do a big overhaul or something. So let's see. Got an idea. So our metro line stops there. There is a ferry to metro exchange, which I'd like to use. No, ferry to tram change. Yeah, I think there might be ferry to metro. But anyway, I'm just going to bring this out and up. And we're going to circle it around. Just trying to think. We want it to kind of come out. I'll tell you what. We'll put the station in first. That way I know where I'm aiming. So I wanted to aim for here. So the manor district, our financial district, is going to have its own baked in metro line. I was going to put it on the inside here rather than on the outside. But maybe I don't have to do that. If we... um. Just trying to think. Yeah. Okay, if we grab this and just take away the zoning. There we go. And then we pop in the metro line on the opposite side. It should be it should work the same, right? Yep. So somewhere about there. And then maybe even here we could have a node to say a little crossing goes in there. And they'll probably need other crossings in the future as well. Now this can also connect out to the coast. Like so. And you could have your own crossing. Alright, so you're going to need power. Okay, so that metro station is now powered on. And then we need to feed it a new line. Okay. So starting here, we're going to loop it around. So we're aiming for that over there. So if this is about the halfway point. Actually, even easier. Bring this all the way out first. And then it's just a matter of joining these two. Now, we could add on another station somewhere here if we wanted to. But I think I'm actually okay with where they are. One right here. So if you think about it, this one is collecting everybody in Seaview. Pretty much like in this side of Seaview. I've named this new bridge, by the way, this new area that's going to be out here. Uh, so Seaview and Newbridge pretty much just have this one stop. Then this part of Seaview, this is still part of Seaview, Carlo Valley. They've obviously got trams and other methods, but they'd have to go there if they want the metro or down here. So I think it's reasonably spaced out. Like you look at the um, dark green highlights so this one this one and this one they're not too far apart and what's that again that's a taxi rank yeah that does feel like it could do with being a stop in itself right maybe one there because that would be a nice collection point for these guys as well possibly so think about that in the future because there is some space there taxi ranks not being used let's face it oh yeah the bus stop that i had there is gone actually i have to put that back in and then we've got a tram going along here so, yeah, think about that. So many possibilities. All right, so let's grab this. We'll go curved. We'll go out straight. Bring it up about halfway. Try to do the same to this one. And I've got a fairly decent loop. Could we maybe move the center point of that up? A bit better. Make that angle a bit better. Cool. Nice big circle. Or um, semicircle. Okay, so that leaves us here. And we need to connect to there. Now, obviously, in the future, th different things are going to be happening. But maybe we can just draw this line relatively straight for now. And connect it up in a straightforward fashion. Yeah. So go to about there. And we'll curl right up. Go straight again. And then hopefully we can curl into that. It's a bit of a sharp angle. Alright, so that's the system we have right now. Um, so obviously you want to be start creating some loops or plan it out a bit better in the future, but it's all good. Don't worry about it. Also, we have abandoned buildings here for a while. 
Oh, City Skylines 2 abandoned. Not a good sign. An ill omen, some would say. Although that one's fine. Although, no, it's not fine. Not enough educated workers. So you're saying dumb people buy City Skylines 2. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> Alright, we'll have to check the heat map of the traffic situation soon as well. But let's start putting in those metro stations. So we want to tell people that they can get the metro all the way over to... Uh, the central station as well. So create a new line here. Oh, actually, don't create a new line. We'll just continue the line that we have. I don't know when that becomes not a good idea to do, but it seems like right now it still makes a lot of sense. So we just grab this line, drag the stop to move it, we'll drag it all the way down to our financial district, and then drag it further all the way into the train station. And then we just add in the little stops here. And we add back in the stops that we're missing. They're all leaving now because they're like, oh, the stop is gone. It's under a little bit of maintenance. Don't worry. Can't seem to add that other one. There we go. All right, they're happy again. Okay, so we'll just let time play. See, does this help at all? We're up to 78%. I'm happy to, with that so far. It's better than it was, especially during the day. And it went back down to 76. <laughs> I want to get it to that coveted 80 again if we can. Oh, just noticed. No water up here at this uh, station. Yeah, it keeps telling me about um, busy crosswalks and stuff here. Is there traffic light? Oh, yeah, there's there's time traffic lights on this. I forgot about that. They've actually been working great, these time traffic lights, at least in this particular spot. It's managed the traffic fairly well. Although there's so much less coming in from here now that the times might need to be changed. Because y you may have noticed the cars will stop here, and that was initially to give these guys way more opportunity to kind of keep going. Don't really need that now. Now it could just really be a bit more straightforward. The minimum time could just be reduced. Looks good though. All right, let's uh, check on our trains. Here's one of them coming back. 19 people. That's okay. <laughs> it's better than nothing. Well, yeah, what have we got waiting? 29, 19, 0, 29, 4, and 28. That's good. Healthy amount. Also, something that's going to be nice is we should start to see intercity trains coming in. So allow intercity trains. I would say that you do not want to allow that. I don't know. You can again, maybe give me some info on that if you think differently. But I say don't allow intercity trains anywhere except the central station. Because they, I don't want them people coming in and getting off here. Get off at the center and drive to where you want to move into or, or whatever you're doing. Be it tourism, etc. Franklin Heights is like a maybe. But I just think, yeah, just this. don't make this route too busy with lots of different trains. But this one, sure. How's traffic now? It's getting a little busier on these roads. There are standard traffic lights in the game, like the vanilla ones in the game here. And then we want to check the tram usage. So we'll just speed up time, try to get through the night fairly quickly, see how everything is shaken out. And then maybe we could build a little bit over at Prospect one last time. So line details. Obviously it is nighttime now. It's interesting, speaking of Amsterdam earlier, it seems like the trams run. The trams, in my opinion, are super efficient over there. The best public transport I've ever seen in a city is in Copenhagen. But in Amsterdam, it's still super efficient. Loved it. By the way, I just saw tons of people coming up. I think they might have gotten an intercity train. Possibly, anyway. Uh, so something interesting is that we, we found out that, oh, wow, look at all these people piling up for the stop here now. That's great. They're using it. Sorry to keep cutting myself off. The interesting thing with Amsterdam's tram system, I thought, was that it only runs during the day. During nighttime, at about 2 a.m., I think, or is it like 1 a.m., the last trams will kind of end, and then a bus service rolls out to replace them. Now, I can't think of a reason in-game I'd really do that. I guess it kind of might save you a little bit of money, but it'd be fun to try and do that, because you can actually set these things to just run during the night or during the day. So it's like daytime only, and then during the night, we have buses all roll out. The problem with that would be that the buses would all have to come from uh, the bus depot down here. So they'd all start driving out at dusk. And I just feel like they would create an inefficiency in terms of time. You know, the way the time in the game plays out. Obviously, in real life, they can be there the moment the trams start rolling back. In the game, they it wouldn't really work as easily as that in terms of timing. It'd be cool if you could set the specific times, I guess. 
110 on the line. Love to see it. So they're after getting off the train. 110 on the line. Heading to their next destination, which is going to be Robin Heights. I'll see how many get off. I would anticipate that a lot of people get off. Almost all. But let's see. It's hard to tell because there's 61 waiting there, so it's hard to tell exactly how many you're going to get off. Oh, not many at all. So I'm wrong. I thought a lot of people would just get off and walk in here, but I guess not many came from here. Maybe further into the center of the city is where they came from, where they want to go. So we're still watching this one. I'm just curious to see how many people are going to get off. And a lot of people should get on here, because it's the only way you can get over to the train station. So if you're... Although, hmm, it's an interesting problem, because the metro... It's not even a problem. The metro runs to the center, and it runs to Franklin Heights. So you can already get a metro here. Do you need to get a metro over to a train to get a train over to there? No, that wouldn't make any sense. But certainly trains are for, should work for the people working in industries. It gets you to Crown Farms and it gets you to Shoreline. No other train really does that. No other method of transport really does that as quickly. So it, has, it does have a use. will be next one to pull up. This place seems super, super busy. It's at an, um, a junction. There's two tram stops and there's a bus terminal that delivers people from the city. Although that bus terminal, I've gotten, I think I've only got one bus route using it right now. Dude, not even. Don't even have a bus route using that right now. So that building is just there to get people to come into the city and we have a train that does that now. So this area could maybe change a bit. Like I wouldn't mind pushing some of these stops back just a little further into the center here and having a more dedicated area for transport exchange again. That might help things, because I don't think these buses are helping anything. <laughs> Especially now that we've hooked up a new place to do this. In fact, this terminal, really, it could just be relocated like somewhere over here. Let me know what you think of that, but I think I'll probably do that. I'll just look at one or two other buildings in between and see. Uh, the other thing I was thinking is, you know, car park or something here would make a lot of sense. One of these, turn it sideways maybe. Have a road going parallel. So just grab the regular roads. Bring it along that. Something like that, just as a, an idea. All right, did that guy already move off? I think so, yeah. So it would be this one then. Yep, Central. Only seven people, so a lot of people obviously got out at that point then. So only seven people are getting delivered to the train station. Twelve getting on. Let's see how our train's doing now that a bit of time has passed. This is the first day of the morning commute, really. Not really anyone on it at this point. Hmm. Stop number one is the central station. And it's also, so, wow. What the hell just happened? I'm so confused. Oh, so an intercity train that moved people from Rockwood just came in. People have gotten out and they're gonna wait to board a passenger train to go somewhere else. So that's kind of interesting. So an intercity, as a intercity method of travel, it's doing pretty good, right? We're taking people in from off the map tourists and some people who are going to move in but probably mostly tourists and they were shipping them around we're shipping them around some of them got out to get the tram cool and then in future what we could do as always we could switch platforms like i said so that they can actually go and oh i meant to do that i meant to have a second platform here uh but yeah for the airport in the future So now what can happen at least is a train can pull in delivering people from outside the city, two at the same time if we wanted, and then someone, our passenger trains can go do the same thing. So hopefully that helps a bit, but ideally, yeah, these are going to have even longer lines. I don't know what I'll use them all for. I, I can only imagine how big you'd have to build your city to do that. It would have to be huge, <laughs> like absolutely huge. It would have to fill up this entire area, and then you could have like, I guess, multiple lines for all the different places, the different corners you're trying to reach. 
Nice, people using my little walkway. Good to see. Yeah, I'm just surprised. Like, I, I would hope to see that. What the hell is this? What the fuck is going on? Where are they coming from? Cars are flying through the air. Let's see if I can grab one when it does that, if it does that again. Come on. There must have been some crazy glitch in a road and a car has just been flung over the entire industry. I don't see it anymore. Wow, weird. Yeah, don't know what was going on there. I remember this little area had issues, but it seems fine now. There goes our cargo train and our passenger train coming in. 41 on the line. Love to see it. That's what I love to see. Hopefully everyone's getting off, but they might not be. Some might be going somewhere else. Yeah, a good amount of people got out, actually. That's good. Nice. And then they're walking to work. How good is that? Love to see it. Alright, so I think that's going to have to be it for this episode. So basically, just adding trains. I mean, that's basically what we did today. We've added trains. Trains... Car parks, trains, rail, multiple stops, redoing our entrances into the city. And then I think in the next episode we're just going to get to it, not put it off any longer. Start building this place to look a bit better and to make a bit more sense. So some of the heavier industry on one side and use a lot more of this space for all the agricultural and crop farms. Um, people I've seen actually use multiple cargo terminals, so we could try that as well, perhaps. But I don't know if we're going to need to do that, but maybe. Yeah, I like this little pathway system. I think it's working out just fine. All right, so that's going to have to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. We'll let time play for a little while in between episodes. See if traffic gets any better. If not, we'll try to work out again another way to hopefully ease the tension in getting into the industry area. It does seem to be building up a lot as people are moving out that way. So this is all the trucks that are piling up because we told them not to take this route. Uh, so they have to go this way, basically. Um, but yep, yeah, this area is going to be redesigned and there'll be a change in the amount of jobs, so it might not even be a problem that we need to solve going forward. We'll have to think about it. Alright, it's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.